Today on Beyond. All my dreams and all my hopes were just gone in an instant. She's desperate to hear from her lost love. What intimate detail of his death does James reveal to prove that her soulmate is still with her? Plus, although I prayed with all my heart, I knew that that was the last time that I would see him alive. This woman's son died on the operating table and she's blaming herself. What's the surprising thing she did before burying her son to make sure she could speak to him one last time? Find out today on Beyond. Using his extraordinary psychic ability to communicate with spirits, he's transformed lives by unlocking mysteries and sharing secrets from the other side. James Van Prague, best-selling author, renowned medium, and your connection to the world beyond. Appreciate you being here and also you at home. Thank you very much for coming back and watching us. We appreciate it. Okay? I'd like to begin, please, because I'm really strongly feeling something right over here. It's about a mother who's coming through and she's talking to me about something to do with either changing over where she was buried or they had a change at the last minute. Does that make sense to you? No? Who has this as a connection somewhere in the back with the mother who was, okay. We planned, they planned on. This is weird. They're planning on a grave or something, and they couldn't do it, and they had to put it somewhere else. Yes. Understand that? Yes. And there's a death that comes close to her death as well. Yes. There's like two deaths very close together. You understand this, please? Yes. Good. And are there two children with you, you have? Well, I have. You had one that passed over? Right. Pardon me? Yes. Yes. Well, is it a boy that passed over? Yes. Because he's here. Do you want to bring either a card or a picture to the show today? I don't know if you did or not, but he's saying about you bringing something here. And it looks like either a card with his picture on it, or like looks like a card to me, though. Oh, uh huh. Is there a child he was taking care of, or someone else's child well, he was very close who to? Someone very close to. Him. Okay, I don't know if it was a friend's kid. Okay. She's saying, you understand this? Is this your husband, or your fr boy, boy, no, brother? We're neighbors. Okay, do you know what he's talking about? Um, I lost a son. He's three years old. Wow. So he's here with your son. And he's telling me that your son is making him a tree house. He's gonna make a tree house. And what? A fort. A fort. <laughs> he fort. built forts all the time. <laughs> okay. Well, he's going to build a fort with him. Is there also another child you have, please? Yes, I have two other children. Okay. Is there a girl, though, that you have? Yes. Who he knew very well, or there was a connection with her? Um, she was only four months old when he died. Well, he's connected with her. Yes, I, I, I can mean, tell very much I've so. got to tell you, there's a connection with her, and I'm leaning over. I mean, he leans over and looks at her. He and, used to uh, do that all the time. And I, this might sound very weird, but... That's okay. I'm in the weird business. That's okay. Um, there's a stuffed animal. It looks like either a goat or a sheep. A sheep little thing. And a stuffed little sheep. Okay. And I want to put it with the baby, so I don't know where that is. Um, when he was buried, we buried him with her little stuffed animal angel. It's a bear. Mm, that don't work for me. I don't, that doesn't work for me. Sorry. It looks like a, well, maybe I'm misinterpreting it, but it looks like a sheep to me. It looks like a round, like a lamb or something. There's a lamb. That's a white stuffed lamb. She's saying yes. This is his grandmother. Your grandma. Hi, Grandma. Hi. Did you, were you going to give him this white little lamb? I'm sure he had a, a white lamb. Okay. I'm sure um, he That's did. what I'm being shown here, and he likes it. So he's talking about I that, okay? Um, the little boy is showing me frogs jumping, 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 and he's playing leapfrog, and he's doing something with frogs, okay? <laughs> and just as confirmation or validation, doing something with the yeah. frogs. Um, no more pain in the head, in the head. He has no more pain in his head. So I've got to relate that to you. He said, tell this to you. And I know that you said the angels will come, you'll see angels. You told him before he passed over that there'll be some angels that come and get you. You understand that? <laughs> and yes, indeed, there is. There's a grandfather coming in right now around you, by the way, who was with him. And I want to play music softly for him when he's sleeping. Remember every you did night, that? Every night. Okay. God bless you. There he's okay. Thank you. All right. I'll leave you with all of that. All right. Thank you very much <laughs> for being here. <laughs> it's about a mother who's coming through. Tell me about your mother, why, why she came through. Oh, she's just really dear, and not real, real, real close. And she was real, real close to my son. You want to bring either a card or a picture to the show today? Oh. You, did you bring a picture today of yes, your son? Yes, yes. At yeah. the last minute, I got it out of the uh, frame and brought it in. The little boy is showing me frogs jumping, 
jumping, jumping. Now your son came through. James said he loved to build forts oh, and yeah. leapfrog. He loved to play leapfrog. He loved to jump or bounce, period. I mean, even before he could walk, he was bouncing all the time, jumping and bouncing and climbing. And he was very rambunctious and, and full of life, you know? A fort, a fort. Um, we'd build the whole living room into forts, and he loved it, and he would want to sleep there and eat there, and if, he probably would go to the bathroom there. <laughs> no more pain in the heads, in the head. He has no more pain in his head. How does that make you feel when James said that? What, um, what, what went through your mind? Re just automatically, it was a lot of relief, because I always wor worried, you know, that he was in a lot of pain before he died. And I know that you said the angels will come, you'll see angels, you told him, <laughs> before he passed over. And that's the, another strange thing about um, him saying that I told him that the angels would um, met him and would take him to heaven. Well, yeah. my grandfather had passed away three days before my son, and my grandmother had passed away, I don't know, about a year ago, a little over a year ago. And I always had it in my brain that they were going to come down as angels and lift him up out of that water so that he didn't feel pain. This was such a strange reading to bring through two sons. Yes. Hi. And they didn't know each other? No. They had never met. Because it's been six years since my son passed away. Do you feel like James really connected? Oh, oh yeah. I'm yes. sure that he did. I'm yeah. sure that he did. Thank you all so much. Thank you. Thank you very much. Still to come. What we have in common is we all lost the men in our lives. They lost what they loved most in life. What intimate details will prove to them that their men are standing right over their shoulders? Plus, she's convinced her son is desperate to reach her. Just two weeks ago, um, all the toys in the nursery that make noise started making noise. She needs to know if he forgives her for his death. But what will he really have to say? Find out next on Beyond. can turn out badly. Our next guest says she forced her disabled son into a surgery that ended up killing him. His death was so hard to accept that she buried him with his cell phone and keeps the service on to leave him messages. What you're about to see was recorded before the show. No one in our studio, including James, has seen it. Here is Vicki's story. I'm here to contact my youngest son, Sean, um, who recently passed away. He was 19, and because of his handicaps, I was responsible to make all the decisions. It was up to me to make sure that the best was done for him in his best interest. Through 24 surgeries, he never was sad. He never felt sorry for himself. And he just lived life to the fullest. The doctors came to take him into surgery at 1.30. The only thing I could say was, I'm here. God's got you in the palm of the hand. You'll be okay. And they wheeled him out. And I knew, although I prayed with all my heart, I knew that that was the last time that I would see him alive. Hi, Vicki. How are you? Nice Hi, to meet James. you. Nice, nice to, to meet, meet you. you. Thank you. I know you lost your son, and I'll try to do what I can do to bring him through for you or help in some way, okay? Yes, thanks. Never guarantee who can show up, but we'll just open ourselves up to see what happens, all right? Thank you. Okay. Your mother, hold on. It's like when I sit here and do this, people start popping up. <laughs> and I want to ask you, her, did your mother's mother also pass over, please? Yes, sir. Okay. And were they very connected, the two of them? Yes. Okay. <clears throat> I don't know if your mother took care of her mother before she passes? Somewhat. Okay. And I want to talk about money here, it's giving money for someone, making sure there was enough money some with, with the mother and your mother. Hold on. I don't know if you took care of your mother with money. I did. Sorry. I don't know what the <laughs> heck this stuff did. means. Okay. Because there's talk here from this lady who's, I guess, your mother, it's your mother here, and it'd be her mother, and then there's a grandfather here. So this must be your grandfather from your father's side of the family, your mother from your mother's side of the family, and your mother. And then there's a man standing there who must be your son, but I will make sure he, makes, he, may, he wants to make himself known, but he wants to talk to them first, okay? Because your mother needs to talk to you first, all right? Your mother wants to say she's sorry about something. I don't know what this means, but she's sorry. And she keeps on talking about being sorry, being sorry, being sorry, and she wants your forgiveness, and she didn't treat you right. And she always thought she, knew she did the right thing. Yeah, that's right. And she said, um, you know, she's always very strict in the way she looked at things. And she didn't, she, didn't appreciate, she didn't appreciate you for who you are. 
your son's coming in here, screaming and yelling, and he said, I've been pushing things all, all in the house, letting you know lights have been going crazy. <laughs> yes. There have been all these things going on and off in the house. M music he's talking about, too. Yeah. I don't yeah, know if this is... toys off that made music in my, okay. in my nursery. Is, my is my affecting the things with music here, machines, or whatever it is, and he's going on about that. Um, there's a hospital with him, so he's showing me in a hospital, okay? Yes. I feel there was definitely some kind of an incision that was they did. I don't mm -hmm. know if there was an emergency run or you had to go to the emergency at one point. Mm -hmm. God, he loves you. Oh, God, he loves you. He said, Mom, <laughs> the, wondrous, the like, wondrous things I found here where I am, you couldn't believe in your wildest <laughs> dreams. He said, Mom, you've come with me on my, in your dreams. You've seen, I've shown you some of it. He's shown you some of it. You must yes. have dreams with him because let me tell you, honey, you've been with him. And there's colors, all these colors you've seen. And he keeps on saying, Mom, calm down, okay, I'm okay, I'm okay in the dreams. You understand that? Yes. He said he's bringing to you other people, other, the same situations. Mm -hmm. And he wants you to all get together, in a way, like in a mass way, to help change that awareness of this, that things, these things go on. Yeah, I'm involved with three other mothers. Oh, my God. And um, I know there's something in his memory, or there's a found foundation, or there's something that you want to be set up for him. Mm -hmm. And he wants to thank you for that. I don't think it's fully set up yet. No, not But yet. it will, because he said you're planning on this foundation, this, it says, in memory of. Yes. You have his um, love and, and his help, thank okay? You. And um, I'm going to leave you with that. All right, sweetie? Thank you. I hope that helps you. And yes. I hope, <laughs> I hope that helps you, too. Thank you. Your mother wants to say she's sorry about something? I just wanted to ask about what James said about your mom and she needs your forgiveness. Can you explain what that's about? Um, we had had a, an argument two weeks before she died and uh, hadn't spoken. But she had been a very difficult woman all my life. It, things were either black or white. There was no gray area. And he said, I've been pushing things all, all in the house, letting you know lights have been going crazy. <laughs> Do you feel what James said is true when he said your son is trying to communicate through oh, electricity and, and toys? Oh, and yes. <laughs> can you tell us how um, that's true? Just two weeks ago, um, all the toys in the nursery that make noise started making noise. He said, Mom, you've come with me on my, in your dreams. You've seen, I've shown you some of it. I talked to him a lot throughout the night. Um, I actually sleep with a candle around some pictures. So the first thing I see when I wake up. So there's a period of consciousness that I don't exactly remember all that happens mm -hmm. other than that I do talk to him. Do you feel like James made contact with your son today? Oh, I, no, absolutely he made contact. There was no doubt in my mind. There was no way he would have known about the incision uh, or the problems that had happened. There was no way that he could have accidentally hit upon the things that happened at our house. They've lost their loved ones. Now, four young women want to know if they'll ever be able to love again. All my dreams and all my hopes were just gone. The answers they get and where they come from will shock them. Next, on Beyond. Previously on Beyond. What we have in common is we all lost the men in our lives that we loved. When he was in the hospital, did you bring a picture? Oh my God, I brought a picture of me where I was topless. It's okay with him that you meet other people. Mm. Understand? Now, part three. He was my best friend, and um, we talked about our marriage on his last day here. And all my dreams and all my hopes were just gone in an instant. I think I want to know what happened with the accident, because it's just a mystery. We were married for two years, and we had just purchased a house, which we had just moved into. And I remember feeling when he died, <laughs> it was almost like a limb had, be, had been torn from my body. I think we would all deal with death easier if we knew what was next. Um, who knows a gym? Is that your husband that passed, named Jim? Or? Um, somebody I would have married. Is there a trip he was taking at the time, or planning on taking some kind of a trip around the time of his death? He was on a trip. Thank you, because he's talking about a trip here. Is there a car crash with yes. Jim? Did two of the people die in this? Yes. Are they business associates that, or friends? Brothers. 
They're brothers. Oh, okay. But they're not living in the same place. No. Okay. It almost like it feels like one of them wasn't their usual. They were they're visiting right. or something. Yeah. Okay. And but I'm telling you this. I see them holding hands, looking yeah. down at the car crash. I'm seeing this. Okay. They were found with their hands together. Thank you. That's what he showed me. Right. On beyond.